So welcome back to a new podcast. Today we are having Bhavini, uh, who is currently pursuing her internship at Intuit. She is in third year IGDT College. Uh, let's start with a brief introduction. Uh, hi everyone. So I am Bhavini Sehgal, and I completed my third year, and now I'm in fourth year of college. Uh, and I also completed my summer internship at Intuit uh, in July. Mom, what's about the now? What's the planning? Uh, now, <laughs> now I'm just uh, chilling for a while and uh, going to get back at DSA soon. Um, because I think DSA to ab karna hi padta hai continue mm-hmm. even after you get an internship placement, jo bhi ho. Um, and yeah, abhi to thode time ke liye I've taken a break after. How was internship. that Intuit experience? It was amazing. Like I don't know um, how many people you've talked to about Intuit, but I can assure you, it is one of the best companies out there. Jo, uh, like on LinkedIn, how we see that Intuit is one of the has one of the best working culture. I got to experience it firsthand, and I can literally vouch for it that it has the best working culture. Uh, the the tech stack is new. It is React, so uh, Intuit is updating its tech stack. Uh, as in, when jitne jitne saal hote hain, they keep on updating the tech stack. So the work is amazing. The quality of work is amazing. The people there, they are so helpful, and you get a lot of goodies also. So <laughs> that's just a plus point. So let's talk about preparation. Like, what did you prepare for Intuit interview? Um. Uh, Okay. Uh, so in my first year of college, um, I knew that I had to start with coding. I did not have computer science in my school. So in first year, I took a course from Coding Blocks, which was a three months course. Um, uh, and that was just to get started. I I wouldn't say like I understood everything because I was so new at it. It was very difficult to understand a few concepts, but I got a good introduction and I had a good base after learning from coding blocks. Then um then I switched to Python for a while. I was doing a project, so I switched to Python. Then I switched back to C plus uh, plus. I started solving questions on lead code. So, uh, lead code was a huge help for me. Then, um, due I think around uh Feb uh last year around Feb I started a uh, pep coding uh free online courses. So I used to solve questions over there. So that course just gave me a structure of how I have to go about DSA. But um, I used to side by side solve questions on GFG and lead code. Um, and I used to give contests on code forces. Not a lot of contests on code forces, mostly on lead code virtual contest or the weekly or bi weekly contest that lead code has. Mm-hmm. And I also solved uh, two sheets. So one was Fraz uh, DSA sheet, which is lead code okay. based, and one uh, was Love Bubble GFG sheet. So I solved both of them, like not cut the complete sheet, but I would say around seventy five percent of the sheet I-, I did that. Yeah. So that coding blocks uh, uh, that uh, cross that barrier of your getting into coding and all. Yeah, so coding blocks was there to just getting me started on yes. what coding is. I did not know anything. I was so yes. new at it. Um, I had PE in my school, so I did not know anything about computer science, how what it is, how it is. So coding blocks really just had just gave me that foundation to coding. So it doesn't matter that whether you have a P, uh, whether you had computer science in your eleventh and twelfth class or like. No, it does not matter. Like yes, the ones who have studied it before, mm-hmm. it at least they know the syntax. They know a few basic codes. They know the concepts. They know uh, the basic uh, DSA, the data structures. But I feel like if you like put in a lot of effort, like since you already know that you are lacking behind. Then you need to put an extra effort, and once you do, after I think like good three four months of practice, you will be at the same level. So eventually, like right now, I would say that 
I do not feel that I was at disadvantage because I did not know DSA beforehand. I had put in a lot of effort initially also to understand and to bridge that gap between me and the ones who already knew it. So I think uh, you can do it even if you don't have uh, computer science in 11, 12th. Why did you choose C++ for your DSA? Uh, so I was initially very confused. I used to search on net constantly C++ versus Java. Uh, this is a uh, think most, question. Yeah, most people do that. Um, but um, during that time, coding blocks uh, had released its launchpad course, which was on C++. And for Java, I think they were going to start the course a little later. So I thought I'll just join C++ and then let's see if I can understand it. And then in college also I had C, so I knew a little bit of the syntax. I could understand it. So I went ahead with C++. But the pep coding course is in Java. So uh, the free course that they have given, mm -hmm. it's in Java. So yes, I I started learning Java also then. I was like, it's just a syntax difference. So why not just go through the syntax so that I can understand what, he, what Sumit sir was teaching. And once I got hold of Java, then I could write code in both C++ and Java, but I am more comfortable with C++. With C++, I think that you can also go in CP competitive programming also now. So uh, is it necessary to go into that competitive programming for cracking interviews of normal remote startups or if we can involve that fan companies too? Uh, in my experience, I think if you know competitive program, see, I have not done a lot of competitive programming, honestly, but if you know competitive programming if you have experienced it then I think the only difference that people who have done competitive and the ones who have not done is the the time that they take to solve the question so if you know data structure and if you understand the logic you will be able to solve the question now someone will take three hours to solve a hard question and the other person might take one hour to solve the hard question and this gap between the time it is very important like this is the deciding factor if you are going to get shortlisted or not. So I think if you do CP, you are going to like, it won't be that drastic for easy question. Like if you are able to solve an easy question in 10 minutes, maybe the CP person will be able to solve the question in seven minutes. So that's not a lot. But if, if there's a hard question, then you might take like a lot of time to understand it and solve uh, it. And the it. one who has done CP, he will think faster, he will write faster, and he will be able to debug also faster. So that is the only difference. So um, I have not done a lot of CP, but then I just got lucky that I, I could solve the questions. Mm -hmm. But there are people who who are not able to do it and then once they start with CP, like they know the logic. There are a lot of people who know the logic and once they start CP, they're able to do it faster. So I think if you have time uh, and if you can devote time to CP, then you should do it definitely. Like you should experience that. It is beneficial for a little bit yeah, of it. It is beneficial. Uh, like if you know CP, there's no harm, no. You are uh, not yes. going to lose anything. You will only gain. So yeah. can you elaborate your uh, interview process, coding rounds and all in? Uh, yes. Uh, okay. So for Intuit internship, uh, there are four questions that Intuit asks. Usually the first question is easy. Second question is easy to medium. Third question is medium. And fourth question is hard. So, uh, I could do three questions out of these four. Uh, I was not able to do the fourth question, but I got shortlisted uh, for interview and I was sitting on campus. For off campus, the number of questions that you might have to do, it might differ. So, um, I had two rounds of interview and in both the interviews, there are going to be two interviewers and first round was mostly people in my college they had their first round of around 30 to 45 minutes and in that they are going to ask you a comparatively easier question and they will ask you a few questions around your resume um, in my resume they just asked me question about one of my projects 
and uh, they asked a few one or two hr questions um, on my position of responsibility that i had mentioned on my resume so those were the questions that were asked and i was not asked to code the question i had to tell them the approach and then the pseudo code and they were convinced that my that, that i knew the question so they didn't ask me to to code it they just told me that we know that you can code it so it's fine um then i got shortlisted for my second round second round will be around 1 hour to 1 hour 15 minutes long um in my second round also there were two uh, two interviewers one of them was a director and the other one was sd2 so uh, one person will ask you the question the other will ask you a follow up question this is how mostly it is done uh, over here so they asked me one question it was a medium level question and uh, i had already done that question so i knew how to code it but i started with brute force i told them my approach i asked a lot of questions i knew the question but still i just wanted to clarify that i am getting it all right and then i coded that question and uh, this time i had to code on a platform in which they could also check the number of test cases that my uh, my code was passing yes, yes, yes. so initially it didn't pass like one or two test cases because of the brute force approach then i optimized it and then it passed all the cases mm-hmm. like i knew the question but it's the process that mattered uh, over there and then the other uh, interviewer he asked me one follow up question and that i did not have to code i just had to tell him my approach and that was it like he just asked me that okay this is the approach why are you thinking like this and why this approach why not something else so they were like trying to confuse me not confuse me but they were just trying to get out the complete thing out of me that if i know it or not so that is what was asked and then um, i think i took around like 20 minutes for the complete dsa thing 20 25 minutes then i was asked a lot of oops so into it does ask a lot of oops and i've heard that they can take interviews based on only oops also so i was asked uh, questions on oops basic like constructor deconstructor then uh, they wrote one code and they asked me what the output is going to be and um, uh, it was mostly around oops only post that i was not asked dbms uh, but i was asked os in os they just asked me about memory allocation um and it was just one question that they asked me and uh, then the language that you're coding in you should know about that language so they will ask you questions around the language so like i told them that i uh, code in c++ so they asked me that uh, what is the difference between vectors and arrays then um, like just basic questions around c++ which they were expecting me to know and yeah so these were the two rounds and in my second round there was nothing asked around my resume or projects but yeah oops uh, os and dsa question yeah so what do you think that when a one wants to a uh, should start their preparation in coding like in first year or in second year or get in in third year to only i think as soon as possible <laughs> you should just start with it let's take once you my, know uh, let's take my scenario like currently uh, i held into second year so if i doing start my dsa in java only so after 4 uh, to 5 to 6 months i completed my dsa just uh, le- let's take a scenario and uh, just make a projects on that only so can you tell me that uh, this type of dsa will help me to get placed in the starting of se- third year um uh, like i think as soon as possible you should start it and it is never too late okay so even if you start in third year and you give it your complete your full then you will be able to crack an internship and if not an internship you will be able to crack a good company in placements so um, like the scenario that you've told me you can start your dsa right now you will be able to complete most topics in 5 to 6 months and post that it's all practice then you have to give contests you have to solve a few sheets you have to practice as much as possible and it should be like your thinking ability should increase with every practice your thinking ability should increase and then that's all like 
like th- there are few topics in dsc that you should know like the basic arrays strings trees graph dp all of that these are few topics that you should know so and you will be able to complete the if you just start reading the concept you will be able to complete everything in one month but when you start practicing it will take you around 5 6 months to have a little confidence that okay if given an easy to medium question i'll be able to solve it now the next challenge is to go from medium to hard mm. and that will take another like 5 6 months or as much time as you can give so it's all about practice yeah so okay fine ma'am uh, it's a great learning from you Thank you. <laughs> we will connect further. अगर मतलब कोई भी problem आती है, <laughs> we will connect yeah. soon. Okay, love talking yeah. to you. Have Same a nice. Here. Thank you.